This is Brad Marcus from Pro Wrestling Junkies. And today's guest is yet another person who could easily put me in the hospital with physical and mental injuries. She's from Moscow, Russia, and began training in 2014 by the world of unpredictable wrestling out of Brooklyn. First match was in 2016, and she wrestles both female and intergender matches. Wrestled all over the world, including US, Canada, and Japan, and you've seen her in Marvelous, Wave, Chikara, CZW, and of course, Impact this past June, where she wrestled Jessica Havoc, and then in another match, she wrestled Jordan Grace. So without further to do, I give you Russian Dynamite, Masha Slamovich. Hey, Masha, what's going on? Hi, I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Good. So d have you even eaten dinner? Oh, so you're in Japan, correct? Yes, I am currently in Japan. Okay, so why are you eating dinner so late? Uh, well, I ate dinner about two and a half hours ago. Oh, okay. And then I just finished uh, running and working out uh, for the third time today, like a crazy person. So Is that an everyday thing, three times a day? Usually three. Sometimes it goes like four. Sometimes it's two. It's, um, it gets a little mixy because uh, sometimes we do like a YouTube live uh, workout or sometimes we have like in-ring training at different times. So it all depends. Have you been back to the, the States um, since the um, the coronavirus madness started, like, and, you know, in March? No, I've been here since January. So is there, I mean, is there uh, as many holdups uh, in Japan as a result of coronavirus, like, as, like shows being canceled or fans not coming? Uh, in April, like right at the end of March um, and all of April, May and June, there was uh, pretty much all the shows were canceled and we had, you know, dojo tapings and whatnot with no fans. And then in July and now we're in August, we've been running, you know, normal shows with fans and things have been relatively, relatively good so far. Yeah, that's is no one's gotten sick. So that's the important part. So let's go all the way back. Were you born in Russia? Yes, I was born in Moscow, Russia. Okay, and uh, how old were you when you came here? Came to the states? Uh, we're we're not. We're we're just gonna we're just gonna leave Russian dynamite as it is. <laughs> Got it. Um, so when you were here, did you speak any English at the uh, when you came? I learned English when I was like five years old going to what kindergarten yeah yeah you know that's fine my my wife moved here from kiev in um when she was four years old again that's how she learned english just like by watching tv and going to school so yeah i remember being a little kid and just like it was kind of weird just hearing other people speak other things around me i don't know i can't couldn't really understand it or like explain it then. Still can't like explain it now because I was a little kid, but it was yeah. just like, oh, what is this? And growing up in Queens, you know, there's a lot of people who don't speak English. There's people speaking Spanish or like Arabic and stuff like that. So it was just very confusing. Yeah, I bet. Um, so where did you uh, get exposed to wrestling first? I just remember one day I came home from like, you know, karate practice. And I just like flipped on the television and, you know, I saw SmackDown. And like instantly, I just, I, within like five minutes, I was like, this is it. Like, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. I don't, like, this is gonna be my profession and my entire life. So Wait, I just was so enamored you, by it. So you weren't at the age of, all right, I'm gonna start training tomorrow. Were you, were you no, still? Very, very young, like maybe like five or something like oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, you so when you turned what eighteen, who who do you contact first? Start training. Well, I started training at the age of sixteen. Okay. And I pretty much googled like schools in my area, schools in New York City, and I decided to contact Johnny Rods. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a phone call, you know, and he told me that he wasn't going to talk to me because I was 16. He told me to like have my parents call him or come into the school. So me and my mom went down uh, to uh, the world of unpredictable wrestling and probably stayed there for a good four hours. And 
you know, right, like I came and started training in two days after that. Was, was your mom, uh, when she came there with you for the first time, was, did she have any hesitancy about you going through with this? Or was she really uh, she, like, supportive? She was supportive of me because she knew that this was my dream and that I wouldn't stop, you know, bugging her about mm -hmm. it until I finally started training. But she was also, like, she has no clue. Like, to this day, she doesn't understand wrestling. Like, she understands, like, matches when she watches them now. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, back then, she didn't know, like, the first thing about wrestling whatsoever. So she had, you know, a lot of questions. But I'm pretty sure that when she got the answers, she still had no idea what the hell they were. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I guess she figured that it was better to just let me do it than have me nag her about it until the end of time. So does she get excited when she sees your matches? She's always concerned I'm gonna break my back or so, or my neck or something like that. Cause you know, she's already had several times that I've come home with some sort of incident. So she's she's worried, but she does she does like my, my wrestling. Great. You, uh, what was your first week of training like? Was it like, was it just like sh shocking to you? It, was it what you expected? Um, I didn't really know what to expect, uh, even though, like, leaving before I turned 16, because I knew that I wanted to wrestle, everything I've ever did was in preparation for wrestling. So I would do, like, track and field swimming, you know, weightlifting. Um, so I knew that those things would be helpful because it would be, like, you know, cardio and have some strength. Um, but when I got in there, I remember specifically it was like me and like three other guys on a Monday night and they were just like, you know, teaching me roles and I was doing pretty good at those because I have a bit of a gymnastics background. So I was, th those are kind of natural to me. And I just remember it, it like progressed very quickly because I remember the first day we were just doing roles and on day three, I was like hitting hurricane runners and I'm like, well, this is crazy. <laughs> like, wow. like, but that's not typical, right? Like that, it picking up that quickly. It wasn't. A lot of people were, you know, pretty surprised that I was, like, they were saying I was natural at it and whatnot, but that didn't stop me from coming in every single day and putting in, like, hours and hours of work because, you know, hard work beats talent. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, did you have, like, a low point, like, of, like, during your training, like, I don't know if I can keep doing this? Never, never. Like, you know, I sometimes like, you know, like everybody would doubt themselves, mm -hmm. obviously, at some point, and I would be like, I don't know, you know, if I'm gonna succeed at this, I don't know if I'm gonna be any good at this. But deep down in my heart, I knew that this was what I was meant to be doing. And there was, I was just never gonna stop. Like I was gonna give it you know, everything, and I was just going to keep pushing. I never, ever in my life had a thought that I was going to quit at this. Oh, that's great. Did the men treat you like they would treat each other, or did they uh, give you any trouble? No, I was, you know, treated just like one of the boys from the start, because they had said to me that there were a couple of like women in the past or whatever who they had went like gently on, and it, it didn't turn out very well. Because it doesn't that, prepare them for what's yeah. actually going to happen. So I just got my ass whooped like I was a guy. Right? And you know what? I'm, I was thankful for it then. And I'm even more thankful for it now because it made me who I am as a person and as a wrestler. And I have nothing but thanks for everybody who did whatever they did and trained me in the ways that they trained me. Um, so you had your first match in Japan. Yes, I had my dating match. Uh, for Reina Pro Wrestling. How did you get there for your first match, as opposed to something here in the States? Uh, so, at the time, Johnny Rod's place uh, had a working relationship with CMLL as well as Reina Pro Wrestling. Okay. So, we had, I don't remember how long it was before my debut. I'm pretty sure it was maybe like six months or, you know, a little bit longer than that. But we had scouts come in. We had uh, Yusuke Kodama and Makoto come and, you know, run some classes. And um, I'm pretty sure they were doing shows out there and whatnot, but they had took the time to stop by and like scout us. And they 
I guess they had their eye on me and they insisted that even though I was underage, that I was to have like a tag match, like an exhibition match, which we went through with that. And then next thing I knew, I turned 18 and I was on a plane to Japan, uh, like two weeks after my birthday. So it was just like a, like a bag of clothing and your gear. That's all, Is did you have to like ship anything over there? No, no. I just, you know, clothing, uh, my passport, my gear. And where do you, yeah. stay? like, did you have somewhere already set up to stay once you got there? You know, I literally got there and I had no idea who was picking me up at the airport. I had no idea where I was going. Like, I just, I walked out, uh, like, from the airport gate or whatever. And there was a man standing there, like, holding a giant show flyer and just pointing at my face, like, on the flyer. And he's just, like, whooping to God. <laughs> I come up to him. Didn't speak a lick of English. Uh, so I just walk up to this guy. I'm like, hey, I guess you're here for me. Yeah. And he just drove me to, like, he, we stopped at a convenience store. He bought me, like, some food and whatever, um, drinks. And he drops me off at this, like, ha like house. And it was, like... It was like a, a, a dormitory for people who came to Japan for like prolonged periods of time for like studying or work or something like that. Yeah. So it's like I had my own room and then there was like a big communal kitchen and like a living space downstairs. And then we all had like a communal, like random people, these are not wrestlers, uh, had like a communal bathroom, communal shower downstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was a washroom in there. Yeah, there was a washroom in there, um, and that's it. I just lived in that like little room, like my own little apartment or whatever, yeah. for a month and a half. <laughs> and so you're not there anymore. No, I'm with a different company now. Okay. Um, so when you get to Japan, what's like the biggest culture shock uh, outside of wrestling? Like the food, finding your way around. I don't I guess finding my way around, like being from New York, uh, was literally never a challenge, like anywhere I go. Uh -huh. So I was I just kind of like, if you can figure out your way around New York, you can figure out your way around anywhere. So yeah. that was fine. Um, the food, like the food quality here is mind blowing. Like I remember when I first got here, that first tour, like anything I ate, I was just like, this is God's creation or something. Like, oh, it was, wow. And to this day, every time I eat something here, I'm just like, God damn, this is the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. Like every single meal is just phenomenal. Was there any food that you ate that your body was gagging while you're trying to put it down? You know, no. Like I've ate some, some weird shit here sometimes. Like I ate, <laughs> I hate, uh, like, I think it's called like albalone and it's like, it's like a sea creature, which is like chewing cartilage. And I, it was very weird to eat it. And then I ate like cow tongue oh, and wow. stuff like that. But it's like, all of it, like, you know, it, if you would have told me beforehand what this was, I would have been like, well, that, that kind of sounds weird. But then you, like I eat it without knowing what it is and I'm told what it is afterwards. So oh, it, like it all, it all tastes good. And then I find out what it is. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> that so for your first match, was it hard to communicate with your opponent? Or was it your opponent from Japan? Uh, my first match uh, back in Reina was actually a six, uh, like a three on three match. So it was definitely a little bit, like not like, to be honest, the language barrier wasn't really that much of an issue because we kind of like worked past it with like yeah. our body language and whatnot. Um, I was just never really taught how to call a match because I kind of like did a lot of stuff on the fly. So trying to remember like so many things that they were like, like, you know, having six people in the ring for your first match, I'm just like, Jesus Christ. It's like, chaos, yeah. So much to remember, but you know, luckily it all went pretty well. Um, <laughs> far as I'm, so, so, so it's all right. I'm gonna not keep you much longer. What's What's coming up for you? As, uh, you know, it, as far as shows. Um, so this Saturday, I'm going to be having my debut for Heat Up Pro Wrestling in the morning. 
And then I'm going to board the bullet train and I'm going to go for the Sendai Girls show in Osaka, which is also on Saturday, uh, August 22nd. And then Marvelous is having their next show on August 24th in Shinky But First Ring, which is located in Tokyo. So okay. that's what my absolute nearest schedule is looking like. Okay, so now I'm gonna just ask you five random questions. They don't really have anything to do with wrestling, but nothing creepy. Sure. Okay, here we go. If I paid you, would you be interested in taking my two children for the next 12 years? Uh, hell no. Got it. Hell no. I, I thought I'd try. I'm, I guess I have to go to Craigslist or something. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you think you could take down a 44-year-old man who weighs 165 pounds and barely exercises in under five seconds? I'm not I saying would, it's me. I'm I saying it's someone else. So, yes. Okay. Um, would you eat dog meat, like a golden retriever or whatever dog you pick? To be honest, I wouldn't put it past somebody giving me dog meat here and then telling me afterwards, hey, you just ate a dog, so you know what? You just I ate a know. golden retriever. I <laughs> okay. just don't know. <laughs> Have you ever yelled at your television set? Yes. <laughs> okay, now tell me if this sounds odd. My, you know, my in-laws are all from Ukraine and they told me that if you urinate on a rag while having a migraine and putting it around your head, that gets rid of the migraine. Have you ever heard of that? I've never heard of that. Okay, all right. So you're yet another person who's never heard of it. Um, all right. We had Russian Dynamite Masha Slamovich today. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed this conversation and hopefully we can talk again, uh, you know, at the end of the summer or beginning of autumn. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great, uh, great time chatting with you. And whenever you want to do this again, I will most likely be available to do so. All right, go get some sleep. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye.